Hi guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Juji. How are you all doing? I hope that everybody is safe and everybody is happy. Today I am here with an unhaul video. I have very limited space when it comes to my bookshelf and when it comes to my reading corner and my reading space in general. I decided that I need to unhaul some books. I am unhauling some of these books because I don't know how it happened, but I ended up having two copies of the same book. I am also unhauling many, many books that I DNF'd. And then also I have a huge stack of books here. These are all books that I never actually read. They were on my TBR pile. And I know what you're thinking, Juji. You're unhauling books that you've never read? That is correct. That is exactly what I'm going to do because the way it works in my mind and in my little world is that when I read the book, I feel that that book becomes the part of me and I also become the part of that book and I want to have those books on my bookshelf even if some of these books are not exactly a masterpiece. I want to have a home library one day and I want every single book that I ever read in my life in that home library. I have it all in my head, imagined, and it looks so good, so beautiful. A room full with books, full with sunshine, full with plants. Ugh. I hope that one day it is actually going to happen. I have absolutely no emotional connection, however, to these books, so they have to go. When I went through my TBR pile, I was super ruthless and I said to myself, Juji, if you are not going to read this book in the last like two, three months of 2023 or like in 2024, then these books have to go. There is absolutely no point in these books taking up space. So that was my thought process. Also, every single one of these books, they are all going to my library. I get all of my ebooks and 95% of my audiobooks through Libby because I am in such a lucky and privileged position that I can be connected to three different libraries through Libby. And this is going to be my way of supporting my library, just simply dropping off these books, donating these books to the library. I already called them and they said that they are going to take in these books. So it also makes me feel a little bit better about, you know, unholing all these books. But this is now the longest intro ever. So let's just get to the unholing part of the video. Now let's start with two books, one nonfiction and one fiction book. And I don't know how, but I ended up having two copies of these books. One of them is How to Be an Anti-Racist, the title is self-explanatory, and then the other one is Less. And this book I actually adore and I have the exact same copy. I mean, this book got the Pulitzer Prize, so you kind of, kind of expect that this would be a great book, and it is. It is a very short book, and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. This book is about Arthur Less, who is a 50 plus year old author, but he is not a very successful author. And unfortunately, also his personal life is not going that well because the love of his life, his former boyfriend, is about to get married, obviously, to somebody else, and he is invited to the wedding. Now, he doesn't want to say yes because he's already heartbroken, he doesn't need to go to that wedding, but he also doesn't want to say no because that would be just like, you know, really weird and obviously sending a message that he is not over him. So he doesn't want to do that either. So what does he do? He accepts invitations from different literary events from all around the globe and he decides to go on a tour and we will just end up following him all around the world as he attends these events and as he reflects at his personal life as well as his professional life. And as you would expect, this book is full with little gems, little uh, life lessons and so much wisdom. In my original copy, I dog-eared so many pages. I think this is a fantastic book. I never read the sequel. 
I cannot say anything about that. When I read a book that I love so much, I am always scared to read the sequel because usually they are not as good as the first book. So that's why I haven't read it yet. But I highly recommend that you read this book if you haven't already. Now, the next huge pile of books, like all these books are... DNFs. I think that maybe we should start with the fiction because I have less fiction books here than non-fiction books. The first book, oh, and this is such a disappointment for me, The Jesset Air. I am DNFing this book. I was, I was about to start chapter 10 when I decided that, no, nah, you know what, I don't need this book in my life. I was super disappointed in this book because this book, at least based on the first um, 131 pages, this book is basically just an Arabic throne of glass retelling. When I read The Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass, I decided that I am going to look up fantasy and fantasy romance books that are set in an Arabic setting. Like reading that book, you know, just remembering the scenery, the, the clothing and the food descriptions, I Think that that book took place in an Arabic inspired world and it worked with me so well. Always interrupted by sirens. Always. That is how I found this book because the author I believe is half Egyptian. Okay the synopsis. Our main female character is called Celia. So Sylvia is the heir of a kingdom called Jessed. Jessed was destroyed by an other rival kingdom, but the heir, Sylvia, survived. And since then, she's been living in exile and she doesn't want people to find out who she is because <laughs> that will be the end of her. Now, the heir, prince of the rival kingdom, comes to town and certain things happen and he wants Sylvia to be his champion in an upcoming championship. Does this sound similar to you? Because to me, it sounds like the plot of the first book in the Throne of Glass series. It just doesn't seem very original to me. I am not interested in a Throne of Glass retelling. If this was a standalone book, I would probably read it, but it's not. I think that this is just first book in a series and I am not going to start this series right now I am really not interested but other than that I cannot say anything bad about this book I think that the the writing uh, flows nicely and it's actually like pretty okay pretty good it's just the plot that I am absolutely not interested in so this book has to go. And the next book, and this is probably going to be a surprise for many of you, is The London Seance Society because I bought this book in the spring as a new release. I paid a lot of money for it because the synopsis and th the plot just sounded so good. However, I am not able to connect with any of the characters and I think that the plot is incredibly boring. It started out really good and really strong, but then everything just got flat really really quickly. I didn't have this book like chapter 11 I think so like 110 111 pages in and oh uh, it's just it's just not working for me so this has to go. And next is a short story collection, Summer Days and Summer Nights. I picked up this short story collection and this is a massive short story collection. It's almost 400 pages or something like that. Yeah, it's almost 400 pages. I picked this book up because the authors who contributed to this short story collection are super famous authors that I never read from. Lee Bardugo, Cassandra Clare, Liba Bray, Nina Lacour, Veronica Roth. I wanted to test out their writing. I wanted to know if it's worth for me to invest into their series, right? <sighs> this book is so incredibly boring. I, I think I DNF this book after the second short story or something like that. Maybe the third. I just couldn't do it. Like, I am not going to chew myself through a 400 pages long book, short story collection, whatever this is, because it's not giving me any joy. Super, super, super boring. Um, 
Now I am not going to keep it. And now a huge pile of nonfiction books. And I am going to start with Michelle Obama's book that I am DNFing. And look, nobody is more surprised than I am because her memoir, Becoming, is one of my favorite books of all time. And I hate saying that, especially when it comes to memoirs or autobiographies, because who am I to, you know, put a star rating on anybody's life and life experiences? But her memoir, excellently written. This woman is so intelligent and she has been through a lot. So I understand why she writes her books. Now this second book, however, is not enjoyable for me because I think that I picked this book up in the wrong time of my life. This book is a self-help book and she talks a lot about relationships and um, motherhood and how difficult it can be sometimes to be a wife and to be a mother. I am not a wife and I am not a mother yet. I am just not there and because of that all her wisdom and what she tries to share in this book, it just went over my head. To be honest with you guys, I also DNF'd it very early in because I was on page 51 when I decided that, oh, you know what, I am just not going to read this book because, again, this is not the right place and this is not the right time. For now, this book has to go. I will, you know, allow somebody else to enjoy this book. And the next book is a super short uh, non-fiction book, The Last Malambo by Leila Guerriero. I picked this book up for August because August is Women in Translation Month and this author is Argentinian. And the whole concept of this book really fascinated me because there is this dance called the Malambo and this dance is described as an Argentinian tap dance. And every single year in a small town in Argentina there is a Malambo competition and this is like the biggest competition ever. And there are so many people who train for a lifetime to get to that competition. And there are not many rules, but one. When you win that competition, you can never compete again. Obviously, you can dance malambo in your like free time or become a trainer or whatever, but you yourself, cannot compete ever again. And what basically the author does, she is a reporter, if I'm not mistaken, and she follows a couple of these Malambo dancers and she interviews them, right? Now, two things. One, the format of this book is, is terrible. There are no chapters. It's kind of like just uh, interview after interview it's like i think it's very clear that this book was written by a reporter and not by a novelist the reason why i picked up this book because i thought that this book would tackle a question that very much interests me what do you do when you achieved everything that you ever wanted in your professional life what is the next step i am not getting an answer to that question and i am 50 percent into this book so i am DNFing it. I don't enjoy the writing. I am also not getting anything out of it intellectually, so this one has to go and somebody else can enjoy it. <laughs> and the next book is The Cloud Spotter's Guide. This is a nonfiction book as well. And I picked up this book because there is this society, the Cloud Appreciation Society, and I follow them on Instagram and I adore their pictures. And I am somebody who is really interested in the sky, not only the night sky and the stars, but also the clouds. And I wanted this book to explain and teach me about the clouds. What are clouds? How uh, clouds are formed? What are the rain clouds? Etc. 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 And that is exactly what this book does. It delivers. However, I had to DNF this book at around page 62 because this book is an incredible info dump. And my brain cannot retain anything that this book is trying to explain. I couldn't tell you what I learned on those 62 pages. So this one, unfortunately, has to go. And I will just keep admiring the pictures of the Cloud Appreciation Society, but I don't think that 
I will ever pick up their book again. And the next DNF is Word Perfect by Susie Dent. I am not going to lie, I picked up this book because of the cover, because to me, this is kind of like a Harry Potter cover. I think that it's beautiful. Gold foiling, look at the back. I think that this book is gorgeous. And I love the concept of this book because what Susie then did here, and she is an etymologist, I believe, and that basically means the study of words when you study the history and the meaning of words and she collected 365 English words in this book for 365 days of the year. Now the problem with this book is one, I cannot keep to it, like I just cannot remember to pick this book up every single day of the year and the second thing is that the words that she collected, I have absolutely no idea what these words are and we definitely definitely don't use these words in the English language. And I'm not just talking about myself because English is my second language. I've also never heard any native English speakers ever use this word. And there are like certain words that I cannot even pronounce. Like July 12th, what is this? What What is this? So, <laughs> Someone else can pick it up and enjoy this book. I think that this is a really good idea, but I'm struggling with it, so no point in keeping it. And the last two nonfiction books that I DNF'd. Oh boy. Honestly, I don't even want to talk about these books because these books were so bad. One of them is Unwinding Anxiety, and then the other one is Frequency. Now let's talk about this book first. The subtitle says that this book tackles the new science, how to break the cycles of worry and fear and heal your mind. And this is something that's very interesting to me and it should be very interesting to so many other people out there because anxiety is, is the epidemic of our age. And if there's a book that could teach me more about anxiety and maybe how to control my anxiety, that would be just awesome. However, on page 57, I decided to DNF this book and that is mostly because of the writing style. I should say the narcissistic writing style of the author. The author very much likes to talk about himself. Every, I don't know, fifth pages, he tells you that he is an MD and he is a PhD and he got his medical degree from Yale and he is heading a research group and it's just too much for me. I am sure that this author is very smart and he is very competent in his research and what he was trying to do in this book. However, a little bit less about him and a little bit more about the topic that he is actually trying to discuss in this book, that would be great. Because 57 pages and I remember everything about the author, but I have absolutely no idea what he is trying to say about anxiety or the neuroscience that he is trying to get across. I should, I guess, understand very easily what he's trying to talk about, but no, um, this just doesn't work for me. I am very interested in the topic, but um, I cannot connect with this kind of writing style. It's just, you know, you're smart. I understand. You have a degree from Yale. Congratulations. Now let's move on. And the second book, Frequency by Penny Pierce, I am DNFing it basically for the same reason. And this book sold millions of copies and there are so many ratings and reviews on Goodreads and so many five stars. And I thought that, fantastic, this is a book for me. I wanna learn more about frequency. I wanna learn more about personal vibration and how to maybe increase my personal vibration. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I DNF this book after like 50 pages or something like that. I don't know what happens in the rest of the book, but again, in the first 50 pages, it was all about the author, like how fantastic the author is and how smart the author is. And if you follow the framework that the author uh, discusses in this book, then you will change your life and just watch how your life changes. <sighs> 
I couldn't do it. If 50 pages in, in a short book like this, you are still not giving me something significant other than how fantastic you are and how fantastic your framework is, I'm just not going to keep reading your book. I'm, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm a little bit too harsh when it comes to these two books, but I am just really disappointed because I expected so much out of these books. Now, if you are somebody who read these two books, because again, you know, I just read the first 50 pages basically in each, could you just tell me in one or two sentences what was the message or the messages in these books because I really want to know especially with this one because this one has such high ratings so please tell me I I actually do want to know this pile which is the biggest pile these are the books that I never read so the first three books these are all Greek myth retellings I love Greek myth retellings especially the feminist one I love that they give agency and they give voice to certain female characters who were done so wrong in this myth however I am DNFing these three and I am going to tell you the reasons Percy Jackson now I do want to read Percy Jackson but every single volume is out so probably I will just end up buying the box set so I can be sure that every single book in the series is the same size and the same height because when it comes to my series I am super particular about that. So I am not DNFing this because I have any issues, just simply I want a different edition and I want different copies. This book, however, this is a book that made me think very hard about the publishing industry and how I have to change the way I buy books. I bought this book automatically when it came out because this is a new release. I think that this came out in the summer and then even this one came out in the spring and I bought them immediately. I just like ate them up. And this is now a problem. After I bought this book, I went upon Goodreads and there is very serious criticism going around on Goodreads when it comes to this book and specifically to the author who openly admitted that although her book is not a retelling of Odyssey but she is using some um, material that is told in the Odyssey but I think that this is like maybe like 10 or 20 years after Odyssey again sorry I never read this book so I cannot tell you the, the exact details but she openly admitted in an interview that she never uh, read the Odyssey, the original material, but she read Percy Jackson. You can go up on Goodreads, uh, you know, find this book and then uh, read what the reviewers are saying. Honestly, it was shocking for me to see that the publishing industry because feminist myth retellings are having a moment they think that they can just put out anything push it down on our throats without making sure that what's on the paper and what's happening in the book is actually very well researched and written and yes it's an issue so my take-home message is basically do your research first and then buy the book and not the other way around so this book has to go and then the second um, book that i am dnfing but not for the same reasons is the shadow of perseus this was a cover buy i am not going to lie and i also bought this book because medusa is supposed to be one of the main characters and i am a medusa fan i need a really really good medusa retelling and i hope that madeline miller one day will grace us with a really really good medusa retelling but this book however i did read um a couple of pages like 22 25 pages so maybe i should have included this in the dnf pile this book is the story of Perseus and that's exactly what the title says so I don't know what I was thinking but this book tells the story of Perseus through the eyes of three women his victim Medusa his mother Danae and then his wife Andromeda and how his ego basically destroyed the lives of these women but I like Greek myth retellings that center around one character 
and not necessarily three and in this book that one character is Perseus and uh, that's not something that I like expected that is not why I bought this book so I'm just gonna give it to the library and then somebody else can enjoy it. For now, I feel like I need a little bit of distance from Greek myth retellings, so these books have to go. Okay, and then the next book is Pride and Prejudice. Now, I am not DNFing this book because I hate it. Like, how could you hate anything that Jane Austen ever written? That's just not possible, especially not Pride and Prejudice. The reason why I am DNFing this book is because I hate this edition. I ordered it online because of the cover, because look at this cover. I think that the cover is gorgeous and it is very rare to find such a nice cover design for classics. And also it says that this is a classics illustrated edition. Now just look at that spine for a second. I mean, <sighs> whatever like what kind of publishing company makes that mistake but whatever this book is very bad quality i really don't like uh the chapter headers um i don't like the paper quality like you're reading one page and then the the paper is so thin that you can literally see the writing on the next page like that's just not not okay in my opinion and there are no illustrations in this book so what are we talking about luckily this was not very expensive this was like six or seven dollars so i don't feel too bad on holding this book but this is a disappointment and what i learned from this situation is that i need to buy my classics in person at a bookshop start where you are a journal for self-exploration uh i have no idea what this book is next book that i'm unholding is a short story collection basically the sister of summer days and summer nights the other short story collection that i dnf but this is the christmas edition and the idea was the same i buy this book so many famous authors here holly black rainbow rowell kirsten white i really wanted to try out the writing of these authors because i never read from them the summer days and summer nights it's left such a sour taste in my mouth that i don't think i want to give this book a chance because again it is just a short story collection but very very long so i think that this one has to go this i bought specifically for my december tbr but I, I don't think that i will read it in 2023 and i am not going to hold on to it till like december 2024 next book interviews with an ape when i bought this book i was really into it i wanted to start reading it basically straight away this was years ago <laughs> now this book is about climate change and it's about humans as a species thinking that we have the right to destroy the planet and to destroy any other species on the planet and this is a very important topic but it's also a very heavy topic and right now I am just not in the mood to read about this and again I bought this book I think years ago and I don't see myself reading it right now or in 2024 so I am just going to again give it to the library and then somebody else can enjoy it. Next book of women and soul I bought this book when it came out because this book tackles immigration and when I see a non-fiction book and when I see a fiction book that is about immigration somehow I just cannot think and I pick them up immediately because I think that I want to read them and then I read the little synopsis or blurb or whatever this book and then I realized that wait I, I am actually really not interested in this story so this one has to go. Speaking of immigration, the next book that I am unholding is the next, what is it? The next great migration. Again, I bought this book years, years, years ago, topic of immigration. I am super into it, but I don't see myself picking this up in 2023 or 2024, so this one has to go. The next book is Buddhism, Plain and Simple. I am very interested in this topic. And some people pointed it out to me that this book is not the best book if you are new to Buddhism or Buddhist teachings like I am. And because of that, I decided to DNF this book and then purchase an, another one, a couple of other recommendations that are more like beginner style. So this one has to go and then somebody else can enjoy it. 
Next book is a super super old book of the month book, Emma in the Night. When I bought this book, I was really interested in it. It's a thriller and this is basically about two teenage girls who disappear one day on the beach and nobody knows what happened to them and then years later one of them returns and then tells the story. I am not really interested in it anymore. Next book I am unhauling is Rules of Civility by Amor Towles. Now I know that this is a fantastic book. Everybody says that it's a fantastic book. I don't doubt that it's a fantastic book. However, I decided that the first book that I want to read from him is A Gentleman in Moscow and then maybe I read this book but I am hesitant because I know that it takes place in New York and maybe in like the 20s or something like that and I don't know why but it just gave me the great Gatsby vibe and I'm not like I'm somebody who doesn't really enjoy the story of the great Gatsby so I just feel very reluctant to, to pick this book up, so I decided to unhaul it. The next book is a Kristen Hanna book, and I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I bought this book, it's fly away. I bought this book, and then I realized that this is a sequel. So obviously I need to read the first book to understand the second book, but then... What is the first book? I think it's called Fiery Lane or something like that, or is that a Netflix TV show? I'm not sure. But if I ever read anything from Kristen Hanna, probably that will be The Nightingale or Four Wings. So I think that I will unhold this one for now. Next book I am unholding is Maame by Jessica George, which was a spring new release that I bought immediately because the synopsis just sounded so good. I bought it online and uh, I bought this book used um, but instead of the book they sent me an uncorrected bound manuscript which is okay it's not a problem but I paid full price for this book and that's a problem. Anyways that's not the reason why I'm DNFing it. I'm DNFing it because I am not interested in this book anymore. This is basically the self-discovery journey of an immigrant black woman living in the UK. Okay, next book. Everything feels like the end of the world. I bought this book in Australia. You can still see the Australian price um, sticker there. So you can imagine how old this book is because I moved to the States like years, years, years ago from Australia. So I've had this book for years and I haven't read it yet, so I don't think that I will read it in the near future. So I decided to unhold this one. This is basically a collection of sci-fi short stories that take place in Australia. And it sounded so interesting to me. I really enjoy sci-fi and I wanted to support an Australian author writing about Australian sci-fi stories, but... Who am I kidding? If, if I don't have the time or the interest to read this book for like years, it's obviously not going to happen in the near future. So I'm just gonna give it to the library and somebody else can enjoy it. And the last book, because yes, we reached the end of this unhaul, is Ghost Empire by Richard Fiddler. I know why I bought this book, I remember. I wanted to buy Sagaland from him because Sagaland, I believe, is about the history of Iceland and Iceland is one of my dream travel destinations. But that book was not available, but this one was. And I thought, like, you know what? This one will do. This is an incredibly thick book and I cannot tell you if it's a fiction or a non-fiction because based on the information that I gathered from the internet, this is kind of like a travel diary of Richard Fiddler and his son when they travel to Istanbul and as they go from side to side they discover the history of the city and this sound really good I don't think that there is anything wrong with this book it's just not something that I am super interested in right now I don't see myself reading this book in the near future and if I read anything that's probably gonna be saga land so Goodbye. Now this is it guys. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for giving me company while 
I am unholding these books. I really appreciate it. Please let me know if you read any of the books from the TBR pile that I am unholding and if you think that I should definitely keep them. If you tell me to keep them, then I probably will keep them. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hit like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. If you are interested in any of my other videos, I will leave them here and here. And I'll see you soon in an upcoming video. Bye!